Peter Stewart lay face up, staring at the blood-red canopy of his bed on the third floor of the Watcher Castle. For those few seconds before he opened his eyes, he kept hoping to find himself in his blue bedroom at home in Norwich, at the top of an exceedingly narrow staircase. He hoped Carlion had only been a dream and that he would return to his usual and rather mundane existence as the nerdy kid at King's Secondary School, who spent half his time in the headmaster's office for accidentally setting things on fire. Five days had passed since the accident in the Jefferson's BMW, and when Peter thought of how much had happened in those five days, it made his head spin. So it turns out there's an ancient tongue after all. In his mind, Peter heard his dad's voice saying, Just remember, in the not-so-distant future, I will be in the enviable position of saying, I told you so. Peter groaned and rolled over, facing the frosted glass window pane. Even in his head that sounded annoying. And there really were penumbra, and they influenced everybody to varying degrees. Except Peter, and his dad, and Lily. Nobody controls Lily, Peter thought wryly. And a group of watchers had been stalking him his whole life because apparently he was both a descendant and a doppelganger of King Arthur. And he might be the child of the prophecy, destined to destroy the Shadow Lord. His stomach turned over at that. What a horrible idea. And apparently his dad had been in on the whole thing from the beginning. Oh, and he had a twin brother, who might be dead. If he isn't dead, that's probably worse, Peter added to himself. He sighed deeply, feeling his lungs expand to the limit and then fall back again, like deflating a balloon. He knew he'd have to get up and go down to breakfast in a few minutes. Isdemus had given Peter and his companions, Brock, Cole and Lily, three days to recover from their horrific adventures at the Fata Morgana. Last night after dinner, though, Isdemus had said it was time they went back to school in Carlion since they couldn't go back to Norwich. Peter wished desperately that he didn't have to go. He wished he could just pretend none of this ever happened. Peter swung his legs over the edge of the bed and let them dangle there, resistant to the fact that the moment he let his feet touch the floor, it would be time to start his day. Finally, his soles made contact with the cold stone and he pushed himself upright with his arms, striding towards the little bathroom connected to his room. He had to prime the pump in order to draw a bath, but when the water began to flow out, he was grateful that at least it was hot. The fire specialist had evidently already made his rounds that morning. While the bath filled, Peter glanced at himself in the mirror over the wash basin, just enough to see that at least the reflection had not changed. He was still extraordinarily pale and pinched looking, his blonde hair rumpled from a night of turbulent dreams. He stripped off the grey T-shirt and shorts he slept in the night before and gingerly stepped into the bath, wincing that the fire specialist had done such a very thorough job. When he was clean and dressed in the clothes that Gerald the servant laid out for him the night before, a maroon sweater with odd little poofs here and there on the front, as if it had been made in the 1970s, thankfully paired with nondescript jeans, he slipped out into the hallway, trying not to feel jittery that today would be yet another first. Lily Portman hadn't slept a wink all night. She sat on the window seat in her chamber and rested her cheek on her hand. Waves of exhaustion rolled over her from time to time, but she warded them off with subsequent bouts of nerves. Today, she would start at yet another new school. Paladin High would make 13 new schools since she was six years old. Usually, the story went something like this. She'd show up and keep her mouth shut for a while, so everyone just thought her quiet and a little weird. Slowly, she'd make a few acquaintances. Then a few weeks to a few months down the line, she'd slip up and respond to her acquaintance's penumbra instead of to the person. Everyone would freak out and avoid her after that, and eventually the teachers would find out about it too. The teachers would tell her foster parents that they suspected Lily was psychologically disturbed, and her foster parents would sigh and say, We know, her social worker told us. Pretty soon after that, Lily's foster parents would either pull her from the school and send her somewhere else, or else they'd send her back to the system for a new set of foster parents, or both. Lily sighed. <sighs> but then, everything changed. 